Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors, my brothers and sisters, Brother Felix here, and tonight we're going to be reading the book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 6 through verses 24. Again, we'll be reading from the book of Mark, chapter 15, verses 6 through verses 24. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life, my wife, Teresa, my beautiful children, Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I thank you for loving and forgiving us, Lord. I thank you for tonight's reading. I thank you for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. I ask what I always ask you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear that verse spoken, may the Holy Spirit stir inside of us. And may we have the courage to actually apply those verses to our life. I ask this in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, Mark chapter 15, verses 6 to 24. Pilate hands Jesus over to be crucified. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insur insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Roman soldiers mocked Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. They began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again, they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Jesus is led away to be crucified. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus was passing by on the way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it, and they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Verse 7 reads, A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. 
Barabbas was arrested for his part in a rebellion against the Roman government. And although he had committed a murder, he may have been a hero among the Jews. The fiercely independent Jews hated to be ruled by pagan Romans. They hated paying taxes to support the despised government and its gods. Most of the Roman authorities who had settled Jewish disputes hated the Jews in return. The time was ripe for rebellion. Verse 8. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. The crowd was most likely a group of people loyal to the Jewish leaders, but were but where were the disciples and the crowds days who days earlier had shouted Hosanna in the highest? Which you can read in chapter eleven, verse ten. Jesus' sympathizers were afraid of the Jewish leaders. So they went into hiding. Another possibility is that the multitude included many people who were in the Palm Sunday parade, but who turned against Jesus when they saw he was not going to be the earthly conqueror and their deliverer from Rome. Verse 10. Knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. The Jews hated Pilate, but they went to him for a favor of condemning Jesus to crucifixion. Pilate could see that this was a frame-up. Why else would these people who hated him and the Roman Empire he represented ask him to convict of treason and give the death penalty to one of their fellow Jews? Verse 13, Crucify him, they shouted. Crucifixion was the Roman penalty for rebellion. Only slaves or those who were not Roman citizens could be crucified. If Jesus died by crucifixion, he would die the death of a rebel and a slave and not the king he claimed to be. This is just what the Jewish religious leaders wanted and the reason they whipped the mob into a frenzy. In addition, crucifixion would be put the responsibility for killing Jesus on the Romans. And thus the crowds could not blame the religious leaders. Verse 14 and 15 read, Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Who was guilty of Jesus' death? In reality, everyone was at fault. The disciples deserted him in terror. Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. Judas betrayed him. The crowds who had followed him stood by and did nothing. Pilate tried to blame the crowds. The religious leaders actively promoted Jesus' death. The Roman soldiers tortured him. If you had been there watching these trials, what would your response be? have been that's a tough one because his own apostles didn't even really do anything you know I would hope that I would have Fought and died by him. But in reality, would I have? I mean, Peter didn't. John didn't. Thomas didn't. All of his apostles left. 
people who see him do his miracles. They were shouting crucify him. What would my response response have been? Hopefully at least I would have been crying. And if I didn't have the courage to actually stand up and die with them, I could only hope that I would have cried and not cheer on his death. That's a real tough question. What would our response have been? Because if we say, oh, we would have fought back and did this and that, and the, only, and the very apostles didn't. Men who gave up their life to follow Jesus. Men who gave up much more than me and you. Gave up their whole livelihood to follow Jesus. They didn't even do it. Who are we to say that we would have done more? That is a tough question, brothers and sisters. If you answer it honestly. The region of Judea where Pilate ruled as governor was little more than a hot and dusty outpost of the Roman Empire. Because Judea was so far from Rome, Pilate was given just a small army. His primary job was to keep peace. We know from historical records that Pilate had already been warned about other uprisings in his region. Although he may have seen no guilt in Jesus and no reason to condemn him to death, Pilate wavered when the Jews in the crowd threatened to report him to Caesar, which you can read in John chapter 19, verse 12. Such a report accompanied by a riot could cost him his position and hopes for advancement. Although Jesus was innocent according to Roman law, Pilate caved into political pressure. He abandoned what he knew was right, trying to second-guess the Jewish leaders. Pilate gave a decision that would please everyone while keeping himself safe. When we lay aside God's clear statements of right and wrong and make decisions based on the preferences of of our audience, we, fa we fall into compromise and lawlessness. God promises to honor those who do right, not those who make everyone happy. I repeat, God promises to honor those who do right, not those who make everyone happy. Verse 19. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. The soldiers paid homage to him. In other words, they mocked Jesus by pretending to worship him. Verse 21. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they forced him to carry the cross. Colonies of Jews existed outside Judea. Simon had made a Passover pilgrimage to Jerusalem all the way from Cyrene in North Africa. His sons, Alexander and Rufus, are mentioned here probably because they became well known later in the early church, which you can read about in Romans chapter 16, verse 13. And verse 24, And they crucified him, dividing up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. Casting lots was a way of making decision by chance, like throwing the dice or straws, or drawing straws. The soldiers cast lots to decide who would receive Jesus' clothing. Roman soldiers had the right to take for themselves the clothing of those crucified. 
This act fulfilled the prophecy of Psalm chapter 22, verse 18. Whew. Some verses that stick out to me. They Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Even going through everything he was going through, he still kept a sober and clean mind. We should do the same. He was about to die and he wasn't trying to catch a buzz or help forget about the pain, medicate the pain. He took it head on. Verse 19 sticks out at me. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. Just sick what these guys are doing to him. Verse 17 and 18. They put on a purple robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail the king of Jews. Verse 13 and 14. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Just goes to show how evil humans we can really be at times. We should never feed the the evil side of us. Never put in bad things into us. We should only put in good things into us. And feed the good in us. Because as humans, we are capable of doing some pretty horrific things. But it's all a choice. You cannot serve two masters. You can either serve God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Or you can serve our evil foe, Satan. Who do you choose to feed? Who do you choose to follow? I choose to feed the Holy Spirit in me. And I choose to follow God, our Almighty Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and here's a little bit on Pilate. In Jesus' day, any death sentence had to be approved by the Roman official in charge of the administrative district. Pontius Pilate was governor of the province of Judea, where Jerusalem was located. When the Jewish leaders had Jesus in their power and wanted to kill him, they had to obtain Pilate's permission. So it happened that early one morning, Pilate found a crowd at his door demanding a man's death. Pilate's relationship with the Jews had always been stormy. His Roman toughness and fairness had been weakened by cyn cynicism, compromises, and mistakes. On several occasions, his actions had deeply offended the religious leaders. The resulting riots and chaos must have made Pilate wonder what he had gotten himself into. He was trying to control people who treated the Roman conquerors without respect. Jesus' trial was another episode in Pilate's ongoing problems. For Pilate, there was never a doubt that Jesus was innocent. Three separate times he declared Jesus not guilty. He couldn't understand what made these people want to kill Jesus, but his fear of the pressure the Jews would place on him made him decide to allow Jesus' crucifixion. Because of the people's threat to inform the emperor that Pilate hadn't eliminated a rebel against Rome, Pilate went against what he knew was right. In desperation, he chose to do wrong. We share a common humanity with Pilate. 
At times we know the right and choose the wrong. I know I have. He had his moment in history and now we have ours. What have we done in our opportunities and responsibilities? What judgment have we passed on Jesus? In the past, I have ran from responsibilities and have failed at several opportunities. Now I try to handle all my responsibilities. I'm trying to make the most out of my opportunities, spreading the, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Strength and accomplishment. Roman governor of Judea. Weaknesses and mistakes. He failed in his attempt to rule a people who were defeated military, but never dominated by Rome. His constant political struggle made him cynical and uncaring compromiser, susceptible to pressure. Although he realized Jesus was innocent, he bowed to the public demand for his execution. Lessons from his life. Great evil can happen when truth is at the mercy of political pressures. Resisting the truth leaves a person without purpose or direction. Vital statistics where this all took place in Judea. Occupation, Roman, governor of Judea, relative, wife, unnamed, contemporaries, Jesus, Caiaphas, and Herod. Key verse. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? That's in John chapter 18, verses 38 and 39. Pilate's story is told in the Gospels. He is also mentioned in Acts chapter 3, verse 13, chapter 4, verse 27, chapter 13, verse 28, and 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13. Great reading tonight, brothers and sisters. And you know we'll continue tomorrow. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. I just thank you and I thank you for tonight's reading. I thank you for dying for us, Jesus. Even though we are not worthy of it, you love us enough that you did do it for us. I just want to thank you. I love you, Jesus, and I just thank you. I ask that you continue to bless all your prayer warriors, Lord. That you forgive us for our sins, that you give us a discerning heart, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you keep us healthy, happy, and safe, that you continue to lead us, teach us, guide us, and protect us. I ask that you heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, colds, coughs, cancers, diabetes, arthritis, sore knees, degenerative back disc disease, tumors, anything that's making us sick or in pain physically, mentally, or spiritually. I ask that you break chains of addiction, whether it's in us or someone that we love. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you break all chains of addiction. I ask that you break chains of sin, any sin that we do and we enjoy. I ask that you break those chains right now in the name of Jesus, and that if we choose to commit those sins, may we feel sick to our stomach. I ask for you to continue to help my sister Elizabeth recover from her back surgery. I ask for you to remove the blood clot that my mom has in her leg. I ask for you to just bless and protect all your prayer warriors. And you know what each one of us is going through, Lord. I ask that you resolve any and all issues that we are going through. I ask you to keep Brother Brian safe in, in county jail. That you continue to keep him safe and fill him with your Holy Spirit, using him for your kingdom, Lord. 
And I hope that October 5th comes up quick for his wife, Monica. May you continue to comfort, strengthen, and protect Monica and, and their children. I love you, God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for loving us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope you guys had a, had a good reading with me tonight, brothers and sisters. And we will continue tomorrow. Good night.